I understand you know uh, Cisco pretty well. Oh, yes. 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 This guy's a very good friend of mine. He, he has the job I used to have. That's right, that's right. Oh, thank you so much. Uh, we'll give people a well, we got five more minutes. Okay. Do you need to go to the bathroom or anything? Long time no see, huh? <laughs> you look great. You look great, well, too. You okay? <laughs> see, I'm retired, though. <laughs> I don't have to fight the battles. So. Oh, okay. okay. How is how, how, your wife Mary? Yeah. You'll see her tonight. Okay, right. Yeah. Yeah. She's coming to dinner. Yeah. She said she had to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Had to see you. Yeah. Yeah, very glad to be here. Yeah. It's, a, it's a summer here. It's still, it's still so, are you just traveling around the U.S.? I don't know, I just stopped uh, by the Washington, D.C. just one night, then came back to see you. Yeah. It's nice to see you. Yes, yes, yes. So many of the students that are here are um, fisheries related students. Right, right, right. The right. Different yeah. things, you know, mostly in the Gulf of Mexico. Yeah. <laughs> you are the big boss, yeah. No, I I have retired. Oh, retired? Yeah. Already? Yeah. yeah. Okay. yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. He's the for, former big boss. Former big boss. <laughs> okay, you retired. Okay. Yeah. When? When? In June. June. President, oh, that's President Ginsha had retired. Oh, really? And I, I was working for her directly. Okay. And so I retired. Then. Okay. Uh, I still, I was doing sea grant with the federal government, but I resigned from that this morning. Ah, uh, okay. Because it's time for uh, somebody else to do this. Mm -hmm. so, okay. And, uh, I do deep water horizon, you know, the oil spill. That oh, yeah, the oil spill thing, yes. Yeah, I still do that. Oh, no, no. Okay. Hey, thanks for taking those this morning. I already sent them over to the uh, 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 last year. By the time I get home, I'll. So, yeah. uh, they should be high quality. Yeah, yeah. They were interacting. Yeah. Like all three of them. But just all the studies and trying to get together and what really happened. Yeah. What did you learn? Masamiya had it. Very few. I spent much time. I know. Yeah. 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 You know, there's a boat named after me here. Yeah, they hit me for now. Yeah, he didn't know there's a boat named after me. We hit it. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's in the shipyard as of this morning. But, uh, Bill Hogan? Yeah. Oh, really? We'll that's, show you. That's, show it to you. that's good. Uh, we we'll built about two years ago. And, uh, the guy that oh, was head of it let it go through the checkdown cruise. So it's been delicious. So they asked me to come back and I've been working with the shipyard. So we took it in today to, to the checklist. So I'm close to work with the builder. Oh, that. Get it put together. So they asked me to do stuff. Oh, that. Oh, that. Did he ask you, if anybody asked you about what you want to you didn't want to say anything about it? Uh, uh, no. You don't want to say anything about it. I told him I was saying it. Look, I've known Moss a long way. He didn't even help me with what he was saying. I regret it. How do you think he survived so long with that? And got elevated. Yeah, they try to, they try to get me to come to the Wanker College to talk about the Wayland Commission. Oh, <laughs> I keep saying, folks, I did all I could do. It's quiet in here. My son's a woman who disappointed me. I thought we were so close. Right, that's right. That's right. We, we, if you see them in Australia, we just, we, everybody, everybody had a winner. Everybody had, everybody had, had a winner. So, I'm going to do a quick introduction. It'll be quick. Please. Please. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Look at all you guys are here saying. Good to see you. Yeah. 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 And give it to you. So, if you leave here, where do you go? Uh, well, I'm going back home. Go back home. Saturday. So, yeah, we're going. It's okay, have dinner with you all, all of us tonight. Yeah. And then we'll meet with you tomorrow morning. Please, as long please. as it takes. Please, yeah, as long yeah. as it takes. Please. Then have lunch yeah. and do it. Sorry, Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you.
Ready? Okay. So why, why don't we get started? Uh, thank you all for uh, coming this afternoon. Uh, we have a couple of very special guests from Japan today, um, Dr. Uh, Masa Miyahara and Dr. Uh, Hideki Nakano. Uh, their, um, uh, Masa is the president of the uh, Japanese Fishery Research Agency and Education Agency, which is basically the science arm for all fisheries uh, policy in Japan. Um, he's well known to people in the United States uh, because uh, Japan not only manages their coastal fisheries, but also is involved in many of the regional fishery management organizations, or RFMOs. And so, so um, I don't know him well. I know him by reputation. But uh, Dr. Bill Hogarth, our uh, former dean, knows Masa very well. So I've asked uh, Bill to uh, say a few words about Masa before we get going. Okay. Thanks. Well, it really is a, an honor to be here to, to introduce Masa. Uh, First off, I'll tell you, Masa never understood a word I said. So, so we went through. He's not the only one. We, <laughs> we went through many years of of ICAT with uh, Masa wondering what did he say, but uh, we had good interpreters. And uh, but Masa was one of those that worked extremely well behind the scenes and as chair to make sure that we could find solutions to these tough international agreements and to protect the the stocks but at the same time try to utilize the stocks and swordfish was one of the ones we had a great bit of right. angst over trying to you know uh, get that stock rebuilt of course believe in tuna we could talk about it forever and uh, they <laughs> they pay a bunch of money for believe in tuna and uh, one thing i tell you muscle will not say the word w-h-a-l-e he won't <laughs> if you ask him about that he goes he just stares he, he told me earlier in the game, I asked him one day, I said, Masa, will you help me? Because I was doing IWC and I can't. I said, would you help me a little bit with, with IWC C factor? He said, nope, nope, I don't deal with it. And I, I think to this day, as one of the reasons he's progressed so quickly and so well through the Japanese government, he has not dealt with whales. He won't talk about <laughs> whales. And so <laughs> he'd have to worry about that side of the country. Uh, but Masa is extremely extremely well educated. I'll tell you why I say that, because he went to Duke University in the U.S. Yeah. I, I found out it pretty early in the game, he told me. In fact, he asked my wife where was she from, and she said, Charlotte, he said, I went to Duke, so it was, it was quick, <laughs> quick. So we had a couple of meetings to get him back over to Duke so they could, uh, could renew his friendship and all with Duke. But Masa is one of the best fisher people. He's one of the best negotiators, and he is was very fair. He tried to work with us, the European Union, and all the other nations as we tried to find solutions. And I think, if you look at some of the international fisheries, I think they're in pretty, pretty good shape yes, right now, yes, really. Yes. And, but it's taken very tough negotiations and uh, and tough leadership. And if you if you think about uh, ICAT, I think everyone will always think about Masa. In the years the Masa was chair, and uh, Masa who worked behind the scenes. People listened to Japan quite a bit, and they had uh, their fishery was big enough, and they were, they were recognized well enough to they could to lend themselves to make it happen. And it was Masa the one that is. I think today we'll talk a little bit more about <laughs> things that may not be quite as well for Japan as they, and that we've all experienced this: how these stocks do, do go in decline, and that we have to go through the process of rebuilding. But it really is tremendous to have him here and be with him again because uh, he is a great person and one of, the, one of the greatest people I work with in the international community. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. So good afternoon. And my name is Masa Miyahara. And uh, I just uh, flew from Tokyo. And uh, you see, I have, I have been working for the Fisheries Agency of Japan Management Body of the government of Japan uh, for 36 years, uh, and then retired from the uh, Fisheries Agency in uh, 2014. Then uh, I uh, 
uh, run for the presidency of the Artist Institute, and I was uh, fortunately elected to be the president of the, this research institute. And I will explain that uh, the, the research institute uh, work later and staff people later. But uh, uh, I have been uh, involved in the uh, RFMO was for a long, long time. Uh, for in instance, I, uh, in ICAT, I, I started work for, uh, for the ICAT as a part of the Japanese delegation early 90s, and uh, I stayed in the ICAT too long, to 20, <laughs> 27 years, and uh, people called me dinosaurs. <laughs> and, uh, but uh, you see, I, I completely retired from ICAT uh, 2017 when, we, when I fixed uh, all the, the Atlantic briefing tuna allocation issue. And now, now TAC is uh, larger than the uh, early 2000. Uh, that was before the reduction started. But anyway, the stock is in a uh, good shape. And so, you see, I think uh, we did a good thing for the uh, Atlantic Blue Fins tuna and swordfish and so on. And I think that was a success story. But uh, today, I'd like to uh, uh, explain about the current situation of Japan. Uh, Japan's uh, domestic situation. And uh, uh, see, uh, we are we, we, uh, making uh, very, very I mean, tremendous effort to reform our policy for the last several years. And uh, even I'm uh, now working for the research institute of the Japanese uh, government, but uh, at the same time, I was appointed to be the advisor to the minister just for this reform issue. Because uh, we have been uh, stuck in a very, very uh, uh, old style of, of Japanese management uh, system. And uh, for many years, even in, uh, I was a part of the Japanese Research Agency, uh, we are not successful to reform the policy. But uh, three years ago, uh, Prime Minister Abe uh, picked up this matter uh, just after the reform of the agriculture policy. Then, then uh, they, uh, he formed a special committee for the reform of the Japanese fisheries policy. And I worked for that committee too. And uh, uh, finally, we succeeded in the amendment of the uh, Japanese laws, relevant laws uh, end of last year. So let me start some explanation on this issue. Um, this is Japanese archipelago, and we have uh, lots, of, lots of fish around Japan, and uh, we have uh, warm uh, current from the south, and uh, Cold current from the north, and the, those two currents are intermingling in, the, in both Japan Sea side and the Pacific side. And uh, uh, this is this form, this uh, intermingling of the intermingling of the current, uh, uh, providing us a very good fishing ground and very abundant fish stocks, and many many species. Uh, we have uh, been enjoying the, uh, over 400 species around Japan, including shrimp, uh, oyster, and other shellfish, and uh, crust seals. But uh, uh, you see, we, we have been uh, taking it uh, for granted for a long time. You see, you know, Japanese people loved the fish uh, and seafood, and, but uh, we, 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 we have been thinking, you see, always the fish is abundant around Japan, and we can enjoy any time fish around Japan, but that is not the case recently. That is the problem uh, we are facing. This is a catch trend of the Japanese uh, uh, fishery. And uh, after World War II, we just intensified our uh, uh, effort to increase the production. And uh, we modernized the fishing techniques. And then uh, catch increased very uh, rapidly. And uh, around the 1970s, it reached a peak. But after uh, mid-70s, it just declined, 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 very sharply. And this blue part is a catch of sardine, Japanese sardine, 
So you see that a population of Japanese has been exploded during the 70s and 80s. And so people said, you see, uh, because of this decline of the uh, Japanese sardine is causing the general trend of the catch decline, but that is not the case. If you look at the uh, uh, Japanese sardine uh, catch, it, the decline already ended mid-90s, mid-90s. But uh, even de deducting, even after deducting the sardine catch, the general trend continued to decline after mid-90s. So you see, this decline of the catch, uh, we cannot stop until now. Now we have to change this declining trend of the Japanese fishery. That was the main reason for the, our uh, policy reform. And of course, objective is the resurgence of the sustainable fishing and relevant industry in Japan. And uh, overhaul the, all, the, all the fishery policies, uh, including many, many uh, uh, aspects even including aquaculture. But you see, we reviewed all the fishery policies and laws and regulations. And this is the largest review conducted uh, just since 1949, immediately after World War II. So, it, so in those over 70 years, we didn't do this type of the overhaul the uh, fishery or major uh, fishery policy or major law amendment at all. So this is big, big for reform. and. Uh, the, the final bill uh, passed the Japanese diet uh, December last year. Then main action of, of actions of the reform is the rebuilding, of course, rebuilding the fish resources around Japan based upon the best available science. This is very important part, best available science, and development of sustainable agriculture. Yeah. Those two actions are the important part of the Japanese before. Then, issues like this. We, we have very see, major fish stocks uh, we are, we are uh, using around Japan is 43, but only seven species are covered TSC. And uh, uh, if you look at uh, just quantitative term uh, in terms of quantity, 42% uh, of the major catch covered by TSC. Mm -hmm. And then if you uh, add uh, international uh, catch limit or tax system uh, for the tuna species, uh, then, then just a little bit over 50% are covered by quantitative control. But uh, you see, the remaining is not controlled by uh, quantity or catch limit or quotas at all. So you see, New policy requires us to cover 80% of all the catches. And then, then uh, this 80% must be achieved uh, in uh, 10 years from now. Then, then uh, this is our task. We have to advise, scientific advice, we, we have to uh, produce scientific advice to the tax on over, um, all the uh, major species. Currently, we are just covering 50 species only, but uh, we are required, required to increase that to the 200 uh, by 2023. In five years, we have to you see, increase this coverage. This is a very big challenge, and uh, uh, we are in a kind of trouble now, but anyway, we have to do this. Then, of course, we have to introduce that the precautionary approach of the fishery management. Then, you see, we have to introduce target reference point and limit reference point in the fishery based upon the MSY. This is also clearly written in the new uh, fishery laws. Then, example is like this. You see, uh, the, the, uh, this is, uh, Japanese common mackerel, Scomba japonicus. And this is very important species for us and uh, one of the major species uh, in Japan. And then you see, 
in, in the last three decades, we have been making the great effort and pain, made, a, made, made a painful reduction of the fishing fleet. But you see, it remained at a very low level, but just recently it came back. Then it just passed the B limit. But we don't have the uh, B target yet. So you see, it is still you see, remained around here. Now, we have to introduce a uh, target reference point for this, then maintain the stock level around the target reference point. That is a new policy requirement. Then, then this is uh, Fisheries Research Agency's uh, challenge. And we have to uh, we have to develop the reliable stock ass assessment for the 200 species, but currently uh, our uh, data collection system is kind of the outdated. We are still based on the paper reporting, and we also uh, have some system uh, to collect data from the landing markets, but we don't have the uh, data collection system to cover all the fish fishermen. Uh, we have uh, some coverage of the limit uh, for the uh, licensed fisheries, uh, large-scale fisheries, but uh, we don't have the good effective uh, catch uh, correction system for coastal small-scale fisheries yet. So this is a big challenge because we don't have data, we cannot do the stock assessment. And we have we, now uh, the stock status uh, changes year to year because of the uh, environmental changes. Recently, as you uh, heard from the uh, recent uh, media coverage, we have been experiencing very unexperienced type of the typhoons every year, and the uh, uh, course of the typhoon is changing from year to year, and uh, uh, global warming is quite uh, clear, and then, then uh, fishery condition and fish migration and uh, reproduction of fish uh, has been changing year to year. So we have to have real time, almost real time based data on not only from the uh, research activities, but also from the catch, actual catch. But uh, currently, uh, old uh, system uh, causing a delay. And uh, sometimes, you see, two years after the catch, we, we, we can of the final statistics after two years of the uh, two years uh, of two years after the catch really occurred. That's all you see that delays appreh apprehension of the stock status. Then of course that will that will cause a delay of the conservation measures. Then fishermen doubt about the assessment results. Then uh, finally low compliance is the end of this uh, vicious cycle. So we have in so for every reason, we have to uh, introduce new uh, data collection system. Otherwise, we cannot you see, uh, provide reliable stock assessment. Then, uh, now we are working with the uh, Japanese industry, not, not the fishing industry, uh, like uh, Canon or uh, audiovisual technology companies, and uh, they, they are providing very, very advanced uh, camera and visual technology to us. Uh, plus, we are uh, working with AI, uh, AI companies, and then we are using deep learning uh, techniques, plus internet. Then we hope to have a very, very useful and uh, almost real-time data collection system. And uh, at the same time, we have to uh, request uh, the small fishermen to use this system. That's why that, that system must be user-friendly. Uh, that is a very important point for us, reliable and almost real-time real data correction. Then we, are, we started some uh, uh, experiment. And we, this is squid jigging uh, fishing operation. Uh, maybe, maybe you know some squid jigging uh, operation already, but uh, you see, they are catching squid one by one uh, by use of this type of uh, automatic 
in the system. So we thought this is the most, I mean, this is easiest uh, target for us to introduce this type of the visual data collection system. And uh, uh, then, then with the Canon set the, set the camera uh, just uh, above the uh, jigging, uh, jigging operation uh, equipment. But uh, we didn't expect squinting. <laughs> that, that, that caused uh, this to the camera lens. Then, then, then you see we gave up the uh, system uh, very, at the very early stage of the experiment. So we have to you see, solve this squinting thing for this thing. But anyway, we are working on this. And another thing is this. Uh, this is a set net fishery in Japan. And uh, uh, they, they uh, catch uh, uh, the, the uh, fish uh, in a mixed situation. They, they, will not, they are not doing the sorting uh, at the fishing ground. They, they just bring back this mixed fish to the landing port. Then landing port using the fish pump to land fish, then uh, automatic sorting machine will uh, sort out the species and size of fish. So we are, uh, we are trying to find the appropriate spot to, to, to monitor the catch. And uh, we are now uh, still working on the uh, setting of the uh, small number of camera to follow, the, uh, to monitor. I think we are making some success in this area, but it takes, uh, still takes a lot of time to finalize the technique. Mm -hmm. Then, uh, this is, uh, I think, main main reason for, for us to come to Florida to ask your assistance. That is, you see, we have to have independent uh, scientific advice uh, to the management side. This is a, a simple, figure to uh, explain the uh, system of the scientific advice. First, we are having the scientific advisory panel meeting. Then, then they, they are uh, making a recommendation on the LRP, LR, limit reference point here, uh, target reference point, and harvest control rules. And that, those recommendations will be sent to the stakeholder meeting. And the stakeholder meeting consists of the Japan Fisheries Agency, and prefectural government, industry, fishing cooperatives, NGO, and others, all the stakeholders. Then they will decide among the candidates of these uh, three elements, uh, LRP, TRP, for each stock. Then that will send back to the uh, scientific committee side, and stock assessment meeting uh, will be held uh, to produce recommendations on the ABC and other management. And the, these scientists' meeting consists of only scientists. That is, academia, FRA, and professors to research institute are providing scientists. But uh, this is not enough. Now we are required to have peer review by outsiders of the stock assessment. And I think this is uh, uh, followed the uh, precedent of the US system. And now uh, we are uh, trying to PR review team consisting of the uh, three scientists, at least, for the one stock. Two Japanese uh, from academia and one, for, one foreign scientist. But that means we want the US scientist to help us for the peer review. That's why I came here to talk with Bill and uh, Steve <laughs> and uh, how, how we can do that. And we are also talking with uh, uh, Cisco of the scientists of N NNFS in Washington, D.C. And uh, so we hope we can have the peer review system as soon as possible. Then, next thing is the second action. Uh, I, I just explained uh, one example of the current challenge. And uh, I we, I'd like to explain the Japanese eel case. And, uh, Eel is not a popular species in the United States, but very, very popular product in Japan. And, but the, the, the situation is like this, you see. 
This is a simple catch of the glass eel. Uh, the glass eel is a, a baby eel uh, to be used for the aquaculture of the eels. But that catch is just uh, coming down, 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 and stayed at the lowest level for the last three, four decades. And the still declining. And uh, uh, glass eel fishery is like this. It's just one man fish, uh, fishing, one man fishing boat and using rice and using the hand net, then easily get uh, glass eel. So it's very easy type of the uh, fishing activities, but the glass eel uh, price is very high. Uh, just one glass eel costs uh, two dollars or three dollars even. So one kilo of the glass eel uh, price is like uh, 10,000 US dollars. A huge price. So that's why we see lots of lots of fishermen want to catch grass here. Plus, uh, we, we have some regulation on, on the uh, see fishing season and the ca catch amount, but uh, so many poaching occurs. Because this is so easy fishing. Anybody can go there and they see, just use rights and the hand net, they, they, they catch it and making good money. That's why very difficult to control, but the situation is like this. You see, Japanese consumer demand, uh, is just one year, 250 million years now. Huge amount of that, huge amount of years, but now we have just 18.5 million glass years this year. So you see, so, 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 so large uh, shortage of the uh, pro provision of glass here or catch of glass here now. Now, now we are ex importing lots of, lots of glass here from Taiwan, China, and Hong Kong, and that is causing a big problem for us too. But uh, you see, now currently 99% of the uh, eel production is from aquaculture based upon the natural bone grass here. So you see, uh, we have to have you see, alternative source of grass here. Otherwise, we have to stop the eat, eating of the eel. Then my institute is now working on the uh, artificial hatching of the grass here. But uh, uh, this type of the, the, the we call it left cephalus, a very small, very early stage of the uh, baby eel. That will become this grass eel. And now, now still it takes over one year. And uh, very, very, still very expensive. Now, now uh, we are producing 10,000 of grass eels uh, recently, but uh, just one grass eel cost 5,000 yen. That means. Uh, Five thousand yen means fifty dollars each. Just one glass here costs fifty dollars. It's not economical at all. So we have to reduce the price. Otherwise, nobody wants to buy uh, artificially hatched glass here. But uh, uh, you see, it takes over one year to raise this stage to this stage. So you see, so many lost during that one year. Plus. You see, so, so many labors are required to raise this glass uh, So now we are working on many, many, many trial type of the uh, te techniques. But anyway, it takes uh, more time, I just have to say. Now, now we are working with the uh, foreign agencies like IFMR of France, NOAA, Cisco. And oh, maybe, maybe. Then Montreal Bay Aquarium and uh, others. And hopefully, we can have some uh, cooperative uh, relationship with your university in future. But uh, uh, we are working with some other parties. And then, then, then this is a recent uh, project we started. Uh, we are working with uh, 
Ankov uh, of Australia and Global Fishing Watch. Uh, this is they established under Google Group. And now, now we are you see, analyzing the satellite data. Then, then looking at the illegal fishing operation. Just this is Japanese uh, EZ boundary, and this is uh, North. This is Russian water and North Korean water, and we have very huge dis distribu uh, di disputed area, uh, just the center of the Japan Sea. And so they are just taking advantage of that uh, dispute. Then uh, putting a lot of lots of fishing boats there in the Russian water now, but they don't report uh, the catch at all. And they are usually catching the squid. And uh, uh, this is just a part of the uh, Japan Sea uh, area, but uh, in other area too, they are catching a lot of squid. And uh, so we have, for the stock assessment, we have to uh, uh, estimate their catch. Otherwise, we cannot reliable stock assessment. That's why we are working with Global Fishing Watch and others to estimate the magnitude of their catch. And we are doing the same thing in this side, Pacific side too. Chinese, Korean, and Taiwanese, and even Russian are catching uh, the, the many species just uh, beyond our 200 mile zone, but they don't report. That's why we have to assess both their catches too. So this is a new area of the, our research. So you see, important point is you see we have to uh, do the uh, stock assessment for meeting global standard now, and uh, we have to introduce new technology and promote international cooperation, and uh, we have to contribute to others and more and so on, and we have to keep close communication with. Then uh, we have to quickly collect various data and make them available to researchers. Yes, we have to do that. Then let, let me explain uh, our institute. Uh, last last uh, item. And uh, we have nine uh, fishery uh, institute, and uh, we, we have national fishery university too. We have 43 branches around Japan, all over Japan, even in Okinawa. And uh, it's too many, so we have to reduce this many. But anyway, we have already 43. Then we have eight research boats and two, two training boats, and uh, over 100, over 1,000 scientists are working. Uh, so we, we, we are doing the all, all, almost all kinds of fishery related research, but uh, we, we have to uh, reorganize our uh, activity, research acti activities too, uh, otherwise we cannot increase the stock assessment uh, for 200 uh, species. So now, now we, we, we ourselves are in the process of reform. But uh, lastly, I, I would like you to understand that uh, uh, we are working very hard, but uh, we, we just, you see, we, uh, only we cannot achieve the project objective. We need your help, and uh, so that's why I'm uh, visiting uh, Florida today and to uh, seek some assistance. Uh, from uh, your scientist, scientific body. And uh, early this month, uh, we visited the European Union and we asked the assistance too. And uh, uh, we hope we can achieve the objectives in the uh, required uh, time period, but it's a big challenge and uh, uh, now, now budget is increasing, but it's money. money doesn't have, uh, solve everything. And uh, we mm. have to work with uh, the real scientists, uh, not only in Japan, but also in abroad. That's, that, that's why I'm here today. Thank you very much. So.
thank you very much. An excellent talk, and I know I have uh, a number of questions. Uh, I just want to sort of preface it by saying I feel like I'm living my life over again. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes. you know, Twenty years ago, when the, in the night, in, when the U.S. law was passed, uh, that was in '76, but it wasn't until '96 where uh, people got serious about you know stock assessments and, and overfishing, and then we're in exact same position. You know. Uh, many, many stocks to manage and very few that were assessed. And, um, money doesn't solve everything, but it solves a lot of things. Right. Right? Mm -hmm. so, but, but also, um, having the people, you know, that's a, that's a big one. You know? uh, uh, and, you know, you know, doing training things. Uh, we have a grant from the National Marine Fisheries Service to, to and we, we support, uh, they support five fellowships in our, in our group uh, every year, and we're trying to Manufacture, you know, um, people that are uh, appropriate, but that takes a long time. You yes. Know, to get, you know, yes. Together, um, uh, I can see your statistics, and I, you know, it's like <laughs> branded in my soul. <laughs> but uh, um, it, yeah, it, 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 some things are, you know, you can organize your way out of them, and some things just take, um, you know, money and time to. Right. Um, uh, questions for. Do you deal it just with commercial, not, no recreational? Yes, we are dealing with recreational too. Yes, yes. But uh, it, it was. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Our control yeah. over recreational fishing is almost not so that's why. Yeah. Okay. Just follow on on the recreational question is do you have any? I'm curious, how popular is recreational fishing in Japan? Are there a lot of recreational fishermen? Getting more and more popular now. Yeah. Yeah. And now, now, now it, it uh, very closely connected to tourism. Mm -hmm. So that's why. And it's expanding. So we have to have at least a registration system plus catch a reporting system too. But uh, currently, almost none. Are you guys working with any new technologies for the actual like sampling of fish um, to collect the data for the stock assessments or anything like that? Uh, not yet. Sampling is uh, probably the most difficult part. To Are there aut any automate. examples from other countries that you're interested in pursuing? Uh, as far as sampling is concerned, I, I, I don't know anything. Yeah. We, we can help you with that. Yeah. <laughs> Sarah, works in a group, yeah, okay. uh, right. Sarah works in a group that um, is trying to use cameras and video uh, towed along the bottom to, to assess um, oh, the bottom fish. Net, net monitoring. Okay. Yes. yes. We have something, yes, mm -hmm. in that field. How, yeah. how are you managing your fisheries? Are you using quotas? Are they transferable? How do you do that? Uh, currently, we have uh, individual quota system for the licensed fishery only. Mm -hmm. And uh, coastal fishery is out, uh, outside of, outside, out of the coverage. And then we have to expand the, the coverage to all the fishing activities. That's a big challenge too, yes. So yes. Most of your coastal fisheries are more artisanal? Artisanal and too many fishing boats. Mm -hmm. Are they forming cooperatives or? Yes, forming cooperatives, okay. but uh, uh, Cooperatives uh, themselves are getting weaker and weaker because of the, uh, uh, the reduction of the catch, and they cannot uh, continue employment of the staffs in the com uh, com cooperatives. So that's why you see, we have to uh, have a better system to replace cooperative system. That, that's a big challenge. And, but uh, I think you see available technology is there, but how, how to combine those new technologies is very, very important and difficult part. Um, yeah, I just kind of following up on uh, some of these other questions that are very similar. What about the proportion of subsistence fishing and how do you track that? Uh, currently, we, uh, for example, uh, in terms of the number of fishing boats, we have uh, 100 
uh, 20 or 140,000 fishing boats. And uh, uh, almost 90, I think over 90 percent of them are coastal, small scale fishing boats, uh, smaller than say 10 meter. And uh, currently they are landing uh, fish at uh, uh, local fishing boats uh, controlled by uh, community or cooperative, and they, they are uh, recording the landing. So correcting, we, we are just correcting landing data only, not catching data. But uh, we have to you see, we play that to by the catch, catch, catch reporting system. You know, I, I looked up a few statistics before your talk, and it's really, really interesting situation. And they have a, uh, their population is about a third of the United States, right? So 120 million, mm -hmm. it's about 350 million United States. So, so three, uh, a third the population. But their per capita consumption of fish is three times as high. Right, so you, you multiply those two together, and it's an incredible um, uh, demand, you know, for for fish. And, and in the United States, ninety percent of what we import is uh, of what we eat is imported. And it's really interesting because Japan and the United States are the two largest fish importer countries in the world. And they they couldn't go back and forth between who's one and who's two. I, mm -hmm. I think we might be might be number one, but I'm not sure. <laughs> uh, so so I mean, there, obviously. Not only do you have a domestic uh, fisheries management issue, but your footprint is very large uh, in the world, right? Mm -hmm. And so there's a question here, right? Um, and we, we have the same issue that our footprint for seafood is very much bigger than the United States. So how do we not only create sustainable fisheries in our own country, but help these other countries who we're importing from mm -hmm. to also have sustainable fisheries? Mm -hmm. Yes. That's very important point, yeah. And uh, look at the, this is surrounding world in Japan. We have very nice neighbors. Yeah, Russia yeah. and <laughs> North Korea and <laughs> China. And they, 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 they don't mind uh, sustainability at all right now. But you see, uh, in the past, uh, for example, here uh, in the middle of the you can see you have big dispute, disputed area. Korea uh, claims large 200 miles, and Russia claims large 200 miles, and Co Korea, North, uh, South Korea also. Then, you see this center part of the uh, uh, Japan Sea is a mess. And that, you see, that, 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 that the Japanese government and the fishermen uh, use that an excuse, as an excuse to avoid fishery management in Japan. Because, you see, those guys are taking whatever they want. And that's why you see, we, it's no, no use to control our catch, something like that. But you see, it's not time to, to, to use excuse. We have to do something first. Then, you see, uh, try to persuade them. To the, but you see, I think currently China is changing. So now, now we have real dialogue with China. And uh, I hope, I think we can change China uh, in 10 years' time. But uh, North Korea, Russia, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Andy, uh, so Andy's the deputy director of the NIMS Southeast Region Office, if you don't know him. He works in that Redwood building over on the other side of the water. Thanks for the presentation. Uh, two questions. One, you mentioned you're completing about 50 stock assessments currently, but need to get to 200 in the next four years. Any thoughts as to how that's going to happen? That's a <laughs> huge increase. Right, right, right. But uh, uh, you see, o of course, we cannot uh, have the uh, same level of stock assessment for 200 species. But you see, we, ha we have to use poor data assessment for the you see, not uh, uh, important uh, species. But uh, at least we have to double. full-scale level of the stock assessment for uh, currently 50 species and 80, 87 stocks, uh, probably we have to double that figure in, in uh, five years. But uh, you, you, but you see 200 is almost impossible target. Right. That's, that's why you have to get that. Well, and so related to that, uh, in 2006, when 
Magnus was reauthorized and we were required to set catch limits for nearly all of our species. There wasn't the tie-in that it had to have a stock assessment, but we did <coughs> use landings data and other information to set what we were considering sustainable catch levels. Uh, is there the flexibility in your policy reform to do that, or do you are you solely relying on completing a stock assessment in order to set those? Uh, in our role, uh, in, in, as a starting point, the stock assessment is essential. So, but, so we have to provide scientific advice. Even though that is very low quality, but we have to give that advice. But uh, fortunately, we have uh, many uh, local government research uh, institutes. They are collecting data for a long, long time, so they, they can provide some this preliminary type of that assessment for the local fish. That will help us out, I think. So, uh, yeah, um, so the kind of talking about or going back to the paper-based system that you have now. So the U.S. had its own seafood import monitoring program. The EU has its catch documentation system. I know probably stock assessments are like top or priority right now. Do you think in the future Japan might consider um, using something like that or a mix of the two to help with you know kind of commercial landings and moving toward the paper-based system to electronic? Data yes, for the licensed fishery, uh, I think we have to introduce the uh, uh, electronic logbooks immediately. But uh, as for the uh, coastal fishery, it's a big question. And uh, well, I, don't, I don't think those, those old local fishermen use uh, electronic logbooks. That's why we have to uh, use uh, modern technology to collect data, not rely on their, their fingers. Do they do the fishermen in uh, Japan use the um, uh, satellite tracking? Um, uh, uh, yes, the, yeah, yes, yes. With the with the backbone of the internet, so they can put their catches in at sea and have the just push on putting on. Yeah. yeah. All of the fishermen in the Gulf of Mexico that fish for reef fishes like uh, snappers and groupers mm -hmm. are required to have the satellite tracking on. 24-7. Uh, they don't necessarily put in the, the landings or catch data in the system, but the system actually has two sets of logs that eventually they get mm -hmm. put together. So is there uh, plans for a regional, like prefectures, do they have different management uh, authorities uh, that you envision under this Vision of the domestic fisheries management. Ah, oh, I think that comes from the prefecture of Florida. Yeah, <laughs> that, that's, is that the right word? That, 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 that's big difference uh, between Japan and the U.S. Uh, we don't have uh, any any uh, twelve mile boundary. Mm -hmm. You see, the, the national government has to take care of all the you see, you see, area of the fish exist. But the uh, only exception is you see some some very localized fish, sedan, like sedentary species. They, they, they just uh, no, uh, exist uh, in that particular prefecture only. Then they, they will manage that fish resources. But it's usually it's, uh, fish resources are transboundary, so the national government has to. But the problem, problem is, you see, uh, now we, we are doing too much. I mean, the national government you know, is doing too much because, you see, uh, we don't have that uh, regional council system in Japan, and uh, but you see, that's why you see Japanese government, central government has to decide on even allocation of the TSC. That's impossible task. So much disputes. That's why so we want to have some regional consult consultative or decision making <coughs> system like you. Otherwise, you see, uh, fisheries agency itself. So my question is um, related to the international aspects of fisheries that you were talking about a little bit there, whether there's shared stocks on the west side or in other places. Um, with the reforms that you're making and um, any requirements for harvest control rules and let's say rebuilding requirements for stocks, so 
sometimes in the RFMOs that manage those, the RFMO doesn't <coughs> doesn't adopt measures that that might accomplish rebuilding. In these reforms, are there any domestic requirements in Japan that might then have to be applied related to those international management managed stocks? I'm just curious about the interplay between any domestic requirements on those international stocks if they're not achieving rebuilding. Uh, very, very difficult question, but uh, uh, I, I think at the early slide, I explained. Yeah, this one. Uh, we have to cover 18% by in 10 years. That, that required rebuilding, too. So major stocks must be recovered within 10 years. But uh, like, like you said, shared stock is a very difficult thing. And uh, uh, unfortunately, uh, uh, in this area, we don't have uh, effective no, no, no international organization exists here. That we have a uh, new North Pacific Fishery Commission in Pacific side. Then we can discuss uh, all, all species there. And uh, uh, we, have, we can push other parties to have a more effective management measures. But in this area, squid is a real problem for us. It's outside of the see, international regime. So we have to have something here, but uh, like I said. So, so has the has the boundary dispute gone to the world court? You know, between the, no, the no, countries. No, no. Because the U.S. De dealt with that yeah. actually when, back in the early 70s, right. 70s, right? Yeah. Where the boundary between the United States and Canada yeah. was was yeah. settled. Uh, you are very you are very good neighbor, but we are uh, North Korea. <laughs> <laughs> North Korea never okay. agree to that. Goal. So he is close. Areas for management areas, managed areas, close them. Closed area? Yeah. Uh, yes, in in our zone we have closed area, but they don't have any closed area or any fishing season at all. Go ahead. One minute. Sort of question. Um, and this is sort of something that's a little off on the side. Um, you obviously don't have many people working on this, especially when you've got 120 million people and you're consuming. How are you guys funded? Because I know you're a population, you know, you've got a lot of retired people, you're not getting tax revenues, you've got a shrinking population. Are you guys challenged by that? Funding and stuff? I mean, I know we are here. Uh, funding for research, you mean? For fisheries research and, and monitoring and stuff like that. Uh, you see, m money is uh, one of the major reasons for we for us to engage in the, this reform effort. And uh, uh, the budget for the refugee agency is declining like catch. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah, so we have that to idea. change that trend. Then, then you see, uh, Prime Minister fortunately picked up that is a kind of a priority issue. Then, then that trend, you see, Changed last year. When he's, yeah. when he's playing golf with Trump, he should say that you know, Trump needs to invest in fisheries too. Right. <laughs> <laughs> But you see, uh, the, for the research budget, uh, be before the reform, we had uh, just uh, 20, 25 million dollars a year, but it increased to 70 in just one year. It's a big, big increase. Yeah. So, could you, oh, sorry. You showed a pie graph earlier of stocks that were managed with turtle level catches. And I think six of the seven were domestic. Mm -hmm. How long have those stocks been under that type of management? And, and I'm presuming that those have been sustainably managed or been successful and why you're wanting to expand that to more species? Uh, we, we have uh, some speci speci uh, very special study to, uh, to examine the effect of a TSC. Comparing the TAC covered stocks and non-TAC non species, and then, then we found very, very, very clear trend: a TAC covered stock is covered. 
like a uh, uh, Japanese uh, uh, mackerel, I saw that uh, picture to me. But uh, other species, I saw. So that's why. Uh, could, could you put the, your second slide on with the map with all the fish on it? I wanted, I wanted to make a point with that. Yep. This is a really interesting graphic because if, if you look at the species here, right, that's essentially their king mackerel, right? Yeah. These are shrimp. Uh, these are, uh, I think these are more or less like jacks, yeah, puffer yeah, fish. Yeah, yeah. So these are, these are fish like in the Gulf of Mexico. Oh, really? These are fish like in New England, right? Yeah. You know, so the contrast in the habitat types right. over, you know, the sweep from, I guess it's about 25 degrees and that's about 40 or 45, yeah. right? right? So it is, is really stark. And, and, and so, you know, you've got this, it's a point you made before that, you know, having one management authority for everything from tropical to no. basically boreal, nobody has enough information right. in their head to right. do that, right? right. So the, your point about regional, right. you know, management things right. is really important. The, the question I have is, um, with, with all of the oceanographic change and climate change going on, do you see uh, animals from the south steadily yes. moving towards yes. the north? Is that a big yes. issue for you? Yeah, that's a big issue. Yeah. That's a big issue. Now, you see, for example, this is yellow tail. Yeah. Uh, the, the northern boundary of the, the yellow tail was here, but now from mm -hmm. Hokkaido is right. catching the yellow tail. <laughs> so you see big change. Uh, but uh, you see two, 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 uh, two, two, uh, two, 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 follow, follow the change of the climate and sea condition and uh, climate changes. Uh, you see, we, we have to have uh, see, almost real-time data. Otherwise, we cannot catch up with these changes and uh, by the changes of the management. Do you have a question there? So, uh, okay. Go ahead, Susan. I, just on that climate change question, I was curious if you were, when you were talking about some of the declines in different populations, are you seeing greater declines in your northern populations? Yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. And uh, another thing is salmon. Coming back of salmon is such a big rainy event. And if you, we cannot stop that trend. And uh, so we will intensify salmon migration research. One of the issues that we, we have, even with our, our, our management councils, you know, we have one in the Gulf, one in the South Atlantic, one in the Atlantic, and one more in New England. The fish don't know those boundaries, right? Mm -hmm. So they're, they're <laughs> going to places where the management scheme right. is not, uh, doesn't have any knowledge about the species right. that are showing up, right? right. So, so there's this issue of who manages right. animals right. as they move up this, that's this right, thing. That's right. so, yeah. so, you know, you, you have a blank piece of paper, you can you can figure this all out. <laughs> <laughs> so if, if you look to the graph where you show the catch trends, yeah. and I mean, there's a big decline there. Yeah. And I'm guessing that the market though, pretty much has stayed the same or increased with population, right? So that gap between what you catch and what you consume, was that filled by wild caught fish from other parts of the world? And how much of that is aquaculture? In, in both, yeah. But the uh, last, for, for the last decade or two decades, our consumption itself is declining. Right. Particularly younger generation prefer hamburger. Unfortunately. So, you see, so the more, consumption more is declining. More red meat and less fish? More red meat and less fish. Is there also more acceptance of aquaculture, like a farm raised fish? Uh, in Japan, still wild fish. But the exception is the uh, salmon. Norwegian salmon. <laughs> Are you stretching your ass? No. So with your net fishery, you said that they don't sort at sea, they take it back and they sort it in a factory. Is that because you guys like mandate that all the catch is landed? Or is it because there are markets for all the bycatch? Uh, 
That's with those pelagic fisheries with the pump, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. But uh, you see, we, we don't have any legal requirement uh, of the uh, I mean landing requirement. So you see, but you, you see, in tradition, all the fish coming back to the boats. That's why we don't, don't need that requirement. But from now on, maybe we need it. Yes. Yes. Yeah, that, that's the that, that's something yeah, we yeah, learned yeah. from the EU and the US system. Yes. And yes. maybe we have to have a legal requirement. But when you have menhaden fisheries and herring fisheries, you know, for the small pelagics, that's the way it's done here too. And then they'll, they'll take them ashore or pump them to a lighter vessel and, and sort them somewhere else, you know. And, and, and they're generally, they're mixed, but there's generally a, a predominant target. So, but you're right, you know, if you've got a pinch point where everything is in a more controlled environment, it's a lot easier than sorting them on deck of a moving boat. You know, mm -hmm. But I, I think that's, I mean, that, that's a great graph, but I, the one I believe, I think, I believe that worldwide catches have remained pretty constant over the past 10, 15 mm -hmm. years, whereas mm -hmm. your catches declined mm -hmm. in the 1990s, which is when those EEZs were formed and stuff, so you're fishing, the areas you're fishing have been constrained, so your catches have partially declined because you're no longer fishing those areas, you're restricted. Whereas those other people, now you're getting into the thing where you can't do, you know, you're looking for other areas to fish and you can't fish for them. So that's partially because of those EEZs that were formed in the 1990s, which restricted the areas you could fish, is that correct? Uh. In part, yes, but uh, you see, uh, the 200 mile long estab establishment was 77, uh, and uh, we continued the uh, fishing in the uh, falling mid until mid 80s only. So after mid 80s, decline cannot be. Yeah, the, 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 big, the big increase is obviously yeah. being driven by, by Japanese sardine, and, mm -hmm. and you know, that you show the, the thing without the sardine, right, right? and still the, the decline. Right. And the situation in Japanese sardine is exactly like the situation in California, mm -hmm. you know, sardine that, that you had these, you know, big overfishing episodes and it's been a long increase to, you know, sort of cannery rope and stuff. Right, 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 right. <laughs> Questions? Can you say a little bit more about the aquaculture industry? Is it managed under the same policy as the wild fisheries and like what's the relationship between commercial and the aquaculture sector? Uh, we have we have two types of the aquaculture. What what is the uh, uh, fish aquaculture using the uh, feed and the food from the, uh, other wild fish usually uh, fish meal and fish oil. But uh, we have big industry of the uh, shellfish and seaweeds. They, are, they don't use feed, feed, food any feeding uh, at all. And uh, uh, for the, do, for, for, and those uh, selfish and the seaweed, feed, aquaculture is doing very good. Because we have a very cost effective uh, aquaculture. But on the other hand, fish aquaculture is very risky business. Mm -hmm. they, because you see, fish near price like this, and uh, uh, for example, we have bluefin tuna aquaculture, and uh, it costs a lot because we have to keep the uh, bluefin tuna in at least three and a half years in a cage to raise the commercial size. But uh, it costs a lot, a lot of food for uh, the bluefin tuna, and uh, uh, after three and a half year or four years, uh, the the market changes like. Uh, a production of atoms to group into the like this, and then the price went down. Then agriculture cannot retrieve the cost. So now the Japanese tuna agriculture industry is having big trouble. And uh, if they sell the fish, then they will be just losing money. And uh, yield agriculture, uh, this is still there doing good, even though they are catching very expensive because uh, you see, it, it takes just one and one year or uh, one and a half year uh, longest. So you see, not so relying on the, uh, depending on the 
So ho hopefully we can reinvent glacial aquaculture and make a lot of money. At this yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I can recall uh, when I used to live in New England, um, the, the fishermen there uh, in the spring when the eels migrate from the Sargasso right. were catching these things. And for, like you say, $10,000 a kilo yeah. and sending them all the way to yeah. Japan and making an enormous amount right. of money right. you know, for this. Uh, Los yeah, yeah. yeah. And but now, now I think the big, largest buyer of uh, those plata is uh, China. Is that right? Yeah. Yes. Because I think uh, the, the quality of Japanese steel is uh, higher in Japanese market. That's why I think <coughs> China is sending all the glass steel to, uh, to us and buying the those plata and other yeah, yeah. supporting glass steel for their other sector. That's the uh, glass steel. Well, I think we've uh, tortured. Um, one, one more question. I have more questions about aquaculture. When the aquaculture is for a species that is endangered, like glass eel, or if you're thinking about sturgeon to produce caviar, one complaint that I've heard is that it keeps the demand very high because you can supply it without getting it from the wild. But then because the demand is so high, you have more illegal fishing. And then the argument is if there was no aquaculture, then the demand, the supply would go to zero, the demand would go to zero, and then you'd actually be able to rebuild the fishery from scratch without any kind of competing interest from consumers. Mm -hmm. Have you, what are your thoughts on that, and how do you think that could change with more sustainable aquaculture and better regulation of these species in the wild? Mm, that's a good question. Um, you see, uh, <coughs> in, in Japan, aquaculture is, you see, fish agriculture is very risky business, as I said. And uh, uh, you see, li like you said, you see, uh, not, not only agriculture, but also wild fishing, wild fish fishing uh, produces, uh, provide uh, the catches uh, to the uh, consumers. And um, usually in, uh, in Japan, uh, wild fish is preferred. And then, then, then you see, uh, strength phenomena of gas like uh, bluefin tuna. Uh, we made a tremendous effort to rebuild uh, bluefin tuna stocks. And uh, during the low level of the uh, stock, uh, agriculture developed. But you see, stock came back, then agriculture going down. So you see, I don't know how, wha how to deal with this sort of thing as a policy maker. See, we have to have some balance. But uh, you see, rebuilding of stock is an unquestionable goal for the managers. So it's very hard. But for the agriculture policy maker, it's very annoying for me. <laughs> so it's a big question for us, yes. You know, it's, a, it's an important philosophical question. Uh, if you completely ban wild, wild um, capture of an animal that's in, at very low levels and also don't encourage aquaculture, are you just encouraging the black market in it anyway? You know, and so, would you rather manage, you know, something that at least you can get your hand on, or relegate it to poaching? And, and that's something for Andy to figure out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a really good question. I, I mean, you, you're into basic human behavior. Right? Yes, yes. Well, that's like the sea turtles and things like that. I mean, we did used to eat turtle eggs, right? And, mm. and turtles. They were and turtles. Mm -hmm. So those things did change. Mm -hmm. um, over time, I, I don't think most people do that anymore. Whereas it was actually culturally accepted not that long ago. And there's a lot of poaching of, of turtles in the Caribbean. For eating? Yeah. Okay. yeah. Okay. Sure. Never mind. I'm not <laughs> no, I, no, it's, it, it's a good example because if you go to some of the islands in, down there, I mean, a lot of the fisheries have collapsed, and you know, um, there's a big tradition of eating green sea turtles in the Caribbean, and, and you know, there's a lot of, as you know, a lot of stuff happens that is extra regulation, right? Yeah. The big big pressure in Hawaii is uh, to um, downlist green sea turtles as well. And that's a, mostly cultural. You know, that you know, for, for eons they've been eating and you know using turtle parts and um, mm. you know it's, it certainly is happening. Hey, you go to Pamico Siam by the Saturday started wanting that turtle stew. <laughs> really? Well, and that's Georgia, and I'm hoping that's mostly uh, <laughs> uh, the Diamondback Terrell. Yeah, that's that's right. Right. Well, uh, let, let me thank uh, Dr. Miyahara. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
stimulated a great debate about you know Thank you. things domestic. So he'll be around. Uh, he and Pepino uh, will be around uh, tomorrow to talk about some of these next things. So if you see him in the hallway, please. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Thank you very, very interesting uh, yes. seminar. Uh, you can see many questions. Right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, if so, they recorded it. So, um, if, if you're okay, you don't yes. have to sign it. Okay. I'll, I'll probably get back to Japan before you do. <laughs> yeah, no, I really, I really appreciate the seminar. It's, very, it's really interesting. It's a problem you have. Uh, when I was uh, in Cisco's job, I had the same problem. I'm sure you talked to him about some of the things. Yeah, yes, 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 we've met at ICAP, yes, 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 but it's been a couple okay. of years. Yes. So good to see you again. Yes. Yeah. Andrew, I don't, I don't move out this. I, I know, yeah, but Shingo's <laughs> taking care of everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 We enjoy working with Shingo a lot. He's very good. Yeah. So, Randy, is 